What is going on, Pats Nation? You guys already know who it is. Paige is global back here with another video. And in this one, we're going to be recapping the final day. The final day of New England Patriots training camp. Something we should have been recapping in terms of joint practice would have been a lot more to take away than what we got over the last like two days, which was basically nothing. Um, but obviously they felt like it was was best to just cancel those pra practices and understandable after the issues with Isaiah Bolden. But we are going to break down the final notes and there's really not a whole lot to take away. But again, these are your final takeaways for the entirety of camp. These are guys pushing to make a roster. Some injuries, unfortunately, with key players today also. So we're going to break all of that down heading into our final preseason game Friday against the Tennessee Titans. Heading into this video on your way in, make sure you guys do leave a big thumbs up. Like I said before, you guys have been killing it. You guys have absolutely been supporting the channel beyond measure, and I appreciate you guys so, so, so much. You know, we usually average about a 1,000 views per video and usually only get somewhere between 100 to 200 likes, meaning that, you know, only 20%, if that, were liking the video. We're getting upwards to 300 likes now, guys. You are absolutely killing it, but we can keep doing better. As you guys know, liking the videos helps the channel out tremendously and pushing the algorithm out there. It's not for looks. It's because it actually supports the channel. Let's see if we can get to 400 likes on this video. We got the best fans on the planet, aka you guys. So leave a thumbs up on this video. And I know, I know, I believe in you guys that we can get to 400 likes now. Let's roll that Patriots Global intro and hop into really our final breakdown here of training camp. don't lag here too much right now we're lagging a little bit hopefully it doesn't stay that way for the entire video but let's start breaking this down guys that were absent today Tyquan Thornton continues to be out Isaiah Bolden continues to be out really no surprise there Connor McDermott continues to be out he was somebody that was out um last week too didn't play in this game so someone who could be potentially dealing with an injury Cole Strange is still out uh, Jonathan Jones is still out. Trey Flowers still on the pup list. Cody Davis still on the pup list. And Calvin Anderson still on that non-football injury list. So for the most part, it, it is the same. It's everything that you would have expected heading into practice. Red non-contact jersey. We said this before. We broke it down. And we'll say it again. Two players still in that red non-contact jersey. That's Mike Kosicki, who, hey, he's back at practice. That's the biggest takeaway. And Pierre Strong. Pierre Strong dealing with a concussion. Mike Kosicki, we don't know exactly what that injury was, but we know about a week or two ago in practice, unfortunately, at Gillette Stadium did go down with an injury at one point. Uh, there was rumors that he might not be ready for week one, but the fact that we're still a couple weeks away from the Patriots' first regular season game at home against the Eagles is very encouraging that he's back at practice at least practicing in some type of capacity, right? I would expect that if he's practicing now in that red non-contact, that he should be good to go. We'll see in what capacity, but he should be at least good to go uh, in some way, shape, or form week one against the Eagles. And then Pierre Strong back, that's obviously a, a, a good direction for him as he's somebody who, um, you know, kind of struggling to make this final roster. And we'll be dropping that record, or not record, but a roster prediction videos early on tomorrow. And you guys will have to see my thoughts on ultimately what happens with him. Guys that were limited today, Demario Douglas. Don't know if he's dealing with an injury, but he was limited in practice um, the last few practices too. Like he was uh, limited during his time in, it was the final practice against the Packers. He was limited yesterday. So wonder if they're just trying to manage his workload or if he's in with an injury. I would assume more injury, though. The fact that he's a rookie, don't know why they would continue to manage that, but might also be part of why they're managing his workload in these preseason games where he's not playing a lot. Carl Davis, also limited. He went down with an injury in this past preseason game. Uh, Cody Russi, he went down that first game against the Texans. And then Michael on Wenu, baby. 
Michael Onwenu, a limited participant. And I'm happy about that because he's back at practice. This is the first time we finally get to see Michael Onwenu back at practice. He is going to be a key piece to week one. We need him to play week one. Whether that's a guard, whether that's a tackle, he is the the piece, the piece to the offensive line, as I truly do believe he is our best offensive line player. So going up against the stout Eagles defensive line is going to be very important to have him. Obviously, no word officially if he'll be able to play week one, but the fact that he's at least practicing in, in some type of capacity makes me feel like he might push himself to play week one. And then today, like I said, we had a couple of injuries. Hunter Henry did go down with an injury at one point. Trainers did come over to him, but it looked like he kind of shrugged them off, told him to kind of go away, was able to get up off of his own power. So he should be fine. We'll continue to see how this story develops. Obviously, we're not going to get um, here, you know, be, be the, have the ability to hear about injuries until the regular season starts. That's when injury reports for each day of practice comes out and we can figure out what exactly the injury is he's dealing with and if he's at practice. He's a limited participant or a full participant leading up to that Eagles game. And then Christian Gonzalez, unfortunately, also does go down with an injury. It was later on uh, in practice. It was said that he didn't practice the rest of camp. Supposedly, he was limping or, or walking gingerly, depending on which reporter you hear it from. But nonetheless, was clearly dealing with an ankle to foot injury that was bothering him. I believe it was said to be his right foot. He did later on join the team in a final group huddle for the day. It was said that it looked like at that point he was walking fine. So Patriots potentially avoided something serious. I would expect that he doesn't play that final preseason game against the Titans as he's going to be a massive, massive piece to week one going up against guys like AJ Brown, Devontae Smith, especially guys with Jonathan Jones who continue to be out. They are going to need Christian Gonzalez week one. So I wouldn't expect to see him in this game. I don't think they need him to play in this game, but let's start breaking down some of the few notes that. Before we do that, though, you guys already know about my friends over at BetUS, the guys that are going to be sponsoring the channel all year long. Guys, I say it all the time, and I will continue to say it. Please, please make sure that you guys support the sponsors that are supporting this channel. Without these sponsors, we would not be able to have the channel we have today. We would not be able to make the amount of videos, the breakdowns, the, the edits that we do, everything we've been able to do over the last couple of months as we divulge ourselves and, and try to grow this channel even more has been because of these sponsors. They've given us the ability to, to put our full attention into the channel. And if you guys continue or want me to continue to have the full opportunity in giving you the best content possible for the New England Patriots, have the opportunity to give you my own personal thoughts from games and traveling to those games and traveling to joint practices and, and traveling to uh, training camps, then guys, please make sure you support the sponsors. Liking the video, subscribing, sharing the videos, that's a great way to support the channel. One of the best ways to support the channel is to support the sponsors. So right now, you guys can get a 125% sign-up bonus with the link in the description and pinned in the comment section below if you are a first-time user. Basically, you put your deposit down. Let's say you put down a $100 deposit. You would get 100, or excuse me, $225 in total to play with because of that 125% sign-up bonus. You are getting more than double your initial deposit because of this. The fact that they are giving this to you guys is once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. I can't believe we were able to get such a good deal for you guys. This is your opportunity to make some great money, and the thing that I love about BetUS is the fact that you don't just bet on games. They have a casino also that you can bet on if that's more your fancy, but I love that they can bet, or you can bet rather, on NFL futures. You can bet on Who's going to have the, the fewest wins out of all the teams in the league? Who's going to make the playoffs? Who's not going to make the playoffs? Who's going to make the Super Bowl? There's so many different futures you can bet on. Some of my favorite futures is to bet on like the Cardinals to have the least amount of wins out of the entire league. I think that that is a home run hit. That's an easy hit right there for some free, easy money. But then also betting on the Patriots to make the playoffs because I firmly believe that they will make the playoffs. So. Make sure you guys check out BetUS, go support them, and thank you again for supporting this channel, BetUS. Now, guys, let's continue to break down the rest of practice here. 
One of my biggest takeaways from what the media kind of came out and said was that the offensive line continues to struggle and they're continuing to struggle in pass protection, which is very unfortunate as that is the area that the Patriots needed to improve on the most um, out of the entirety of the team for this upcoming season. But they would have allowed eight total sacks today. From what was said, they would have allowed eight total sacks I believe it was like a pretty even four to four between Mac and Zappy, which I mean, you're allowing even four sacks a game. You're probably going to be last in the league in terms of offensive line play, but also you're not going to have a lot of offensive success with that many sacks. And I mean, there, there was a point where we had 13 sacks in one day at camp. It seems like the minimum at this point has been uh, about four to eight sacks per day. And if that's the minimum, I, I'm I'm concerned. I have a lot of questions. But one of the guys that stood out the most, as you probably could have assumed as I look here at my notes, was Matthew Judon. This guy was absolutely standing out the final day of practice. It was said that he had about three would-be sacks slash pressures. Obviously, what's a sack versus a, a pressure in a training camp session? You don't exactly know, but he was in the backfield a lot today. In general, the defense stood out yet again with bad offensive line play. And then Bourne and Boutte also continuing, or Booty, continue to both stand out. It was said that Mac Jones had several deep passes and deep connections to Kendrick Bourne, put up a couple of touchdowns. He was looking really good. Looks like that's going to be his go-to receiver. As for Boutte, he had four catches today and a last-minute touchdown and is also being utilized on special teams. I think that Kendrick Bourne and Booty are very similar guys in very similar roles, which is why I don't think we'll see a lot of Booty this upcoming season unless injuries do occur. But I do wonder if this is KB's last year in New England, because if Booty does continue to showcase himself, then the Patriots have that kind of Kendrick Bourne replacement, again, as long as he can keep performing well for about the next four seasons because he's under contract. So just food for thought there. Little early prediction for you, but those guys continuing to stand out, especially Booty, who it seems like each practice is getting more and more divulged into the Patriots offense. Speaking of these pass catchers offensively, Anthony Fersker is also continuing to showcase himself. He is outside of your main two tight ends in Gasicki and Henry, the best receiving tight end that this team has. I'm not going to say the best blocking because I would give Johnny Lumpkin and I would also give Sokol the blocking ability over first Ferkser. But in terms of all-around tight end, in terms of receiving ability, that guy is definitely, definitely Anthony Firstgrass. He was shining yet again today in the final 11-on-11 session. It was said that he ran a beautiful corner route and hauled in a touchdown pass from Mac Jones, along with a couple of other passes, and was getting open, notably, quite a few times. Again, he is my favorite guy to take over that tight end three spot if there is one. I'm not a big Matt Sokol fan at this point, but I do think that all of those guys do revert back to the practice squad. But still, another great showing as we get down to roster cutdowns here for Anthony Fersker or Ferkser. And then another good day for Zeke Elliott. It seems like every day Zeke Elliott is more and more involved within the Patriots offensive scheme. Got here a little over a week ago, and he's doing everything that you possibly could have imagined. Like, it seems like they're going to utilize him the same way they use Ramondre. Ramondre's good at blitz pickup. Ramondre's good at obviously being a running back. Ramondre's good at being a receiving back out of the backfield. But they have all of those three things with Zeke Elliott. And for the first time in I don't know how long, The Patriots have two three down backs, and I think this is something that they are truly going to utilize. And I think those guys, those abilities with having Zeke and Ramondre, two three down running backs is what's going to make this offense so dangerous in this upcoming season. But it did say that he did get um, a couple of touchdowns yet again today, was working in pass protection, also got a couple of receptions today also. Basically, nothing new on the Zeke end. And then Bryce Beringer. Bryce Beringer, or as I guess he's being called at this point, Bryce Boominger is out there as the Patriots' starting punter. He's looking spectacular. Looking is absolutely spectacular. He had two punts that clocked today with a five-plus second hang time, and his other punts outside of those were in the high fours. At this point, It just comes down to consistency. If he can be a consistent punter, 
he easily wins this job. Waitman is consistent, but he's consistent in the terms of constantly kicking in those low four twos. Beringer will kick at a, a high five, or excuse me, a, a low five and then a high four, but then end up coming out here randomly with a, a low four punt. As long as he can stay consistent, I think he wins this job, and he's at least showcasing it back in practice today that he is the guy, that he is the puncher that they are going to roll with for this upcoming season. And as I scroll down here, it does sound like Thyric Pitts hauled in another impressive catch in the back of the end zone for the Patriots today. He is building his days. He's not a guy we talk about a whole lot, not a guy we expected to talk about a whole lot as he was kind of just a, a last minute addition to this receiving core, but he is stacking his days in this back end. He's clearly not going to make a roster. Um, I don't think he's going to make anybody else's roster. I don't think he's going to make this roster, but I think at this point, he will be put back on the practice squad. As long as he stays healthy, I think the Patriots are going to bring him back on the practice squad. A big X receiver on the outside who's stacking days, who gives you some kind of liability just in case somebody like Devontae Parker does go down. So he's doing good. He's continuing to stack his days also. Now, cornerback Sean Wade also had a pass breakup today on Malik Cunningham, probably had another one. They didn't say against which receiver, but it was along the sidelines, they said. Um, He's standing out. He's continuing to do good. He shut down John Mechie week one against the Texans. I think that he makes this roster. I truly do. The Patriots have invested so much into him. They traded that fifth round pick a couple of years ago to acquire him from the Ravens. And they're finally getting what they invested that fifth round pick in for. And I think with all of the injury concerns, Sean Wade makes a back of the end 53 man roster spot. Little sneak peek at my upcoming um, 53 man roster projection. But what are your guys' thoughts from practice? Not a whole lot to take away today, but still some notes. Let me know what you're thinking in the comment section below. Remember to leave a big like on this video, and of course, subscribe to the channel for all of your New England Patriots news. I appreciate you guys for watching, as always, and of course, never forget.